I was born on April the 2nd, 1842. My father was Carlo and my mother Brigida Savio. We were living near Turin, but when I was two years old, we moved back to our native village, the birthplace of my teacher, Don Bosco. I was just like any other child. My parents were very kind to me and did their best to bring me up as a good Christian. They introduced me to Christ and at the age of four, I was communicating with Christ face to face. He was my best friend. I was happy and enjoyed helping my mother with the house chores. I was the one who used to remind the family when it was time for prayer. How old are you? At the age of four I was communicating with Christ face to face. Is Christ your best friend? If not, how do you try to make your friend? Do your parents introduce you to Christ? The chaplain in my village noticed my relationship with Christ through my regular presence at the church with my mother. He often saw me kneeling outside the church to pray when the door of the church was locked, even when there was mud or snow on the ground. The priest was so happy with my progress at the village school. I was clever and hardworking. I used to make friends with bad boys who sometimes did wrong. Later, I would explain to them why it was wrong and why we shouldn't do it again. How often do you go with your parents to church? Do you have any special devotion to Christ? Does anyone notice your way of communicating with Christ? Do you touch your friends' lives in any way? If your friends do something wrong, do you explain to them that they shouldn't do it again? How is your progress in school? Are you hard working?
I started serving Mass when I was five, and I was a regular at confession and communion. This helped me to develop my relationship with Christ. The day of my first Holy Communion was the happiest and most wonderful day of my life. I made some resolutions on that day in 1849. I will go to confession often and to Holy Communion as frequently as my confessor allows. I wish to sanctify Sundays and Holy Days in a special manner. My friends shall be Jesus and Mary, death rather than sin. Do you play an active role in the church? Are you baptized? Are you faithful to the promises you made at baptism? What was the most wonderful day in your life? Do you have any resolutions, even one? At the age of 10, I went to school, three miles from my village. I had to walk to school and back home again every day. A local farmer asked me one hot sunny day if I was not tired of walking. My reply was, nothing seems tiresome or painful when you're working for a master who pays well. What is your motivation for what you are doing? When you are asked a question, do you think before replying? Does the answer come from your heart? What kind of answer do you give? My first contact with John Bosco was on Monday of October 1854. The meeting was possible due to parish priest who gave a full account of my life to Don Bosco. I told Don Bosco my intention was to come with him and my wish was to study and become a priest. I asked Don Bosco what he thought of me, and his reply was, I think you are a good material. Don Bosco referred to me as a material. I knew that material was what a tailor worked on. So I said to him, you are a good tailor. So if the material is good, 
Take me and make a new suit out of me for our Lord. Don Bosco recognized my goodwill. He agreed and took me with him. In your journey in life, do you make your intentions known to people who can direct you? Do you share your life with others? What is in your mind now? Are you open to share with others right now? Do you know that sharing your problem is halfway to solving them? Are you good material and who is your tailor? Oratory is a playground, a place of prayer and a place where young people find happiness. When I arrived at the oratory, I placed myself in the hands of Don Bosco, knowing quite well that he would make something good of me. Don Bosco's mother was indeed a mother to all of us in the oratory. She kept an eye on me and spoke to Don Bosco about me. You have many good boys, she said, but none can match the good heart and soul of Dominic. I see him so often at prayer, staying in church after the others. Every day he sleeps out of the playground to make a visit to the blessed sacrament. When he is in church, he is like an angel in paradise. Where do you find happiness? Are you truly happy with your life? To whom do you turn for guidance? Do people have something positive to say about you? Do the parents of your friends touch your life? Have you
you found someone who will help you become a good person in the future? At the oratory, two of my friends had a disagreement. They decided to settle the row not with a fist fight, but in a fight with stones. They were older and stronger than me, and I knew I could not intervene physically. I reasoned with them, but to no avail. On the day of the fight, I went with them to the site where the fight was to take place. And just before they started, I stood between them, and holding up my crucifix, I told them to throw the first stones at me. They were both ashamed and gave up the fight. I persuaded them to go to confession. One day, about three months after I came to the oratory, Don Bosco gave a talk about holiness. I was impressed by three points in particular. It is God's will that each one should become a saint. It is easy to become a saint. There is a great reward waiting in heaven for those who try to become saints. This point inspired me and I made a decision to become a saint. However, I was still confused as to how I could live a saintly life and I was worried about it. Everyone in the oratory could see that I was not myself. Don Bosco advised me to resume my normal cheerfulness, persevere in my regular life of study and religious practices, and especially not to neglect being with my companions in games and recreation. What inspires you in your life? You can be a saint. It is the will of God that all of us should be saints. It is easy to become a saint. Just do your daily activities in an extraordinary way. Have you made a decision to do something valuable with your life? Do you have someone who advises you when you are going wrong or when you are worried? I thought penance would help me to become a saint, so I used to make my bed uncomfortable with small stones and pieces of wood, sleeping with a thin covering in winter, wearing a hair shirt and fasting on bread and water. When Don Bosco discovered that what I was doing, he forbade me to do any bodily modification because it would affect my health. He said that for me as a schoolboy, the best penance would be to perform all my duties 
with perfection and humility, and added that obedience is the greatest sacrifice. I made up my mind that I could not do big things, but I wanted everything to be for the glory of God. I did not complain about the food or the weather, unlike some other boys at the oratory. I bore all suffering cheerfully and practiced custody of my eyes and tongue. What efforts do you make to be holy? Do you punish yourself to become holy? If you do, I think God will not be pleased with your efforts. It is better to be yourself and do your daily duties with perfection. I knew that I was not going to live long, so with the help of some friends, we started a group in school called Sodality of Mary Immaculate. The main aim was to obtain the special protection of Mary during life and at that time of death. What I proposed to the group was to honor and to bring others to honor Mary by different means and to encourage frequent communion. On June 8th, we met before the altar of Mary at the oratory and together we read out our promises. Who is married to you? Do you remember her in your daily activities? What is your contribution to the lives of your friends? What have you done that people are going to remember when you die? Do you think you are going to last long? Make your effort now. There is no time left. We all used to observe a monthly practice introduced by Don Bosco. It was called the exercise for a happy day or the monthly day of recollection. This practice was encouraged by Pope Pius IX. Part of it was to go to confession and communion. I observed this practice devotedly and I said that I would be the first amongst the group to die in the month of May.
Do you have time for yourself to reflect and examine your life? Do you think about your death? Do you know when you're going to die? Do you prepare for your death? Each day is an opportunity to prepare for your death. Do you ever think of this opportunity? My health was not good but I did my best. I spent time with my friends talking with them and encouraging those who were experiencing troubles. The doctor sent me home to recover from my ill health. But I was so much in love with activities in the oratory that Don Bosco found me back at the oratory. In spite of this affection for me and his wish to allow me to remain at the oratory, Don Bosco decided to follow the recommendation of the doctors, especially since I had developed a severe cough. He wrote to my father fixing the date for my departure for 1st March 1857. I told Don Bosco I wanted to spend my last days at the oratory. On the day of my departure, he said that I should make the exercise of a happy death with great zeal, even saying that this would be my final devotion, and that I would not come back again to see it. I said my farewell to Don Bosco and my friends at the oratory. How is your health? Do you think your health has anything to do with your spiritual life? Whether you are in good health or in ill health, do you try to be close to God? When I arrived home, my appetite decreased and my cough became worse. I was taking the doctor who told me to rest in bed, but I knew my time had come to go and leave alone. I therefore asked to make confession and I received Holy Communion. After four days, when my parents thought I was getting better, I asked to be anointed. My parents agreed just to please me. That was my preparation for death. On the evening of March 9, after a visit from my parish priest, I asked my father to read the prayers for the exercise of a happy death from my book of devotions. Then I slept a while 
when I woke, I knew the time to go had come and I said, Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye. The Lord took me away on 9th March 1857. My father thought I was just in a deep sleep when he discovered that I was no longer alive. He wrote to Don Bosco conveying the sad news. Are you the master of your body? Are you aware of what is going on in your mind? Do you take time to get in touch with your feelings? Life is a precious gift from God. Destemido, foste leva Jesus Cristo para os cristãos prisioneiros que se doariam mais Cristo antes morrer do que entregar o corpo santo de Jesus. Que Deus amante, eu quero ser o santo de como tu. Pelo caminho abordado, anjo perigo encontrado, aos inimigos negastes, o corpo santo de Deus, antes morrer do que entregar o corpo santo de Jesus. Já 
mataram A tua vida entregastes Mas o segredo guardastes Por muito amor a Jesus Antes morrer do que entrega O corpo santo de Jesus Encontrado pelo soldado quadrado, o tá convertido e sepultura te deu. Antes morrer do que entrega o corpo santo de Jesus, de Deus amante, eu quero ser. Ó São Tarcísio, como tu. Declarado padroeiro Dos coroinhas e acólitos Tua vida em nós desperte Grande amor a Eucaristia Antes morrer do que entrega O corpo santo de Jesus De Deus amante eu quero ser Ó oh, São Tarcísio como tu. Tô...